Welcome into the Big Blue Review on the SEC Network. I'm your host, Christy Thomas. For the next 30 minutes, we'll relive and look back at the most memorable moments in the year that was for UK athletics. First up, it's our Wildcat Wrap as we take a look back at all 22 varsity sports at the University of Kentucky. The UK athletic season started with a bang as the Kentucky football team played the first game in Commonwealth Stadium after a $126 million renovation transformed the program's longtime home. The Wildcats would fall just shy of a bowl berth, but UK sustained its momentum under Mark Stoops by hiring new associate head coach Eddie Grant and four other new assistants, landing another highly ranked recruiting class and moving toward the completion of a state-of-the-art new practice facility. The fall sports season was highlighted by the men's soccer team's regular season Conference USA title. The first championship won as part of the 135 Elite. The team was anchored by first team All American goalkeeper Callum Irving, who was also a scholar All American. Kentucky volleyball was ranked nationally throughout the season and reached the NCAA tournament for their 11th straight season. Senior Morgan Bergren and sophomore Ashley Dusick were both honorable mention All Americans. The women's soccer team rose to number nine in the polls, a school record, but injuries and a late season slump left the Cats out of the NCAA tournament. With an eighth ranked signing class, UK is poised to be back next season. Kentucky's men's and women's cross country teams both earned all academic honors yet again, while Jacob Thompson led the way on the course with a 44th place finish at NCAA championships. The winter sports season unofficially tipped off with another Big Blue Madness spectacle. The men's and women's basketball teams entered with plenty of preseason hype yet again and both delivered. The men's team won the SEC regular season and tournament titles. Celebration begins. Lexington smile in. Behind All-American Tyler Eulis and number seven NBA draft pick Jamal Murray, while the women reached yet another Sweet 16. UK Rifle had the best national finish of any Wildcat team, coming in fifth at NCAA Championships. Freshman Hannah Carr was a first team All-American for the Cats before going on to compete for Team USA this summer. The Kentucky gymnastics team made a school record 12th consecutive NCAA regional appearance where freshmen Sydney Dukes and Alex Highland qualified for all around at NCAA championships. There, Dukes became just the second first team All-American in school history. It was a memorable season for the Kentucky swimming and diving teams. Danielle Gallier became the first swimming national champion in school history, winning a 200 backstroke to lead the women's team to a 22nd place finish, while the men finished 40th. Gallier also won the Elite 90 award for having the highest GPA at NCAA championships. Kentucky cheerleading normally found supporting the Cats on the sidelines took its annual turn in the spotlight by winning the national championship. The title was their 21st, which is best in the nation. The winner also brought a big moment away from competition as UK unveiled a new graphic identity in conjunction with Nike. The new identity brings a refined primary mark and a new Wildcat mark and will be reflected on uniforms for all teams starting next season. The UK softball team showed off the new marks early in a record-breaking 2016 season in which the Cats won 46 games and finished second in the SEC. UK received its highest national seed ever in the NCAA tournament, and Kelsey Nunley became the program's first ever first team All-American. The baseball program missed out on the NCAA tournament, but will work to return soon behind new head coach Nick Mingione. Mingione, an assistant when UK won the SEC in 2006, returns to Lexington after a successful tenure as an assistant at Mississippi State. The biggest turnaround of the 2015-16 season came from the men's golf team, which rebounded from missing out on an NCAA tournament last year to finish 13th at NCAA championships behind third team All-American Chip McDaniel. He could be the greatest Kentucky golfer of all time. Freshman Anna Hack, who qualified for the U.S. Women's Open this summer, will look to lead a similar turnaround for the women's golf team next spring. Kentucky sported ranked men's and women's tennis teams throughout the spring. Both squads reached the NCAA tournament, with the women making the second round behind top-ranked doubles pair Aldila Sugiati and Mami Adachi. Sugiati also won the Elite 90 award. The track and field program continued its resurgence under Edric Florial. The women's team finished 12th at NCAA indoors and 11th at NCAA outdoor championships, while the men finished 22nd at outdoors. 
UK had a national champion in the women's 100 meter hurdles for the second year in a row as Jasmine Camacho Quinn became the first freshman ever to win the event. All told, the 2015-16 season in UK athletics brought a seventh and eighth straight semester with a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or better, three conference championships, two individual national championships, and a 26th place Directors' Cup finish, the fifth top 30 finish in a row. You know, it's nearly impossible to come up with the top 10 plays of the year because there were so many great moments in UK athletics, but we've managed to narrow it down. So now sit back and relax and enjoy our top plays of the year. Good combination into the dismount. That terrific routine by Sydney Duke was a 9-9. What a meet Kentucky's having. Fires a shot. What a fantastic save by the freshman goalkeeper. The first offensive play of the season. Big ball, 25, 30, 40. Look out! He's gone! Touchdown, Kentucky! And Kentucky opens the season with a sonic boom! for Epps in transition right now. None whatsoever. Epps, who's made history tonight. Stokes with the diving play. That's how you put an exclamation mark on a great day if you're the Kentucky Wildcats. He goes back to Gibson. Kentucky, great effort by the Cats to keep the point alive. But Edie can't put it away. Claire tries to. The Cats are everywhere, and they get the point. <laughs> Corey's going to have to hurry to get back to the bag, and they collide. And, and he caught The it. outfield, and then caught by the center fielder. Unbelievable. Down the right field line and at the wall. Did he make the catch? Yes! Oh, oh. what a catch by Carson. High and deep. Slummy. Go back. Look up. Good night. <laughs> Noah Hutchins. Johnny yes! on the spot. Eulis, like a highlight reel, threw it off the backboard for Lee to slam it down. Oh, Murray. Oh, my goodness. The fabulous freshman from Kentucky, Jasmine Camacho Quinn. Camacho Quinn takes over. It is Jasmine Camacho Quinn dominating. Daniel Gallier of Kentucky in the 200 back. It's Gallier. It's Bartholomew. So, of course, for next year's show, I'm sure this guy would like to see a lot of baseball highlights in that highlight reel. Welcome back in as we now welcome one of the newest members of the UK coaching staff. It's baseball coach Nick Mingione. Welcome to Lexington and welcome to Kentucky. Oh, thanks. It's excited to be back. It's um, a place I've always dreamed about being back to, so it's, it's neat to be back. And when you say back, that means you were an assistant at UK uh, several years ago. So tell us about that time and really what has drawn you back to Kentucky and what you loved about uh, Lexington in Kentucky then? Well, um, I came from Embry-Riddle. It's an NEI school where I played and coached and spent seven years there and John Cohen was the head coach at the time and he uh, offered me a job opportunity so I, I came back and I'll never forget just driving on this campus for the first time from Daytona and the sun going down and driving up and seeing the most beautiful green grass I've seen just rolling into Lexington and then being on the campus and seeing the field and just spending time at, you know, just the beautiful buildings and everything. So to be a part of the Southeastern Conference, number one, and then it being my first job, um, I'll never forget that. And then 
you know, ultimately in 2006, us winning the Southeastern Conference for the first time in school history and seeing the community rally behind our, our guys. And it was a special time and something I'll never forget. So the campus has changed maybe a little bit oh. between now and then, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, matter of fact, you know, just having kids on campus, you know, here and just driving around, it's like, well, that building's new. Oh, there's another new building. Right. Hey, I don't know what that one is yet, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful campus, as you know, and it's definitely changed. Tell us a little bit about what your vision is for this program and, and where you see this thing going. Going. Yeah, sure. So um, basically, you know, being in the in the league now for over a decade, it's the most challenging league in America, especially when it comes to baseball. And what I've learned is just being fortunate enough to be a part of some multiple championships and ultimately competing for a national championship. The one thing all winning teams have in common is there's a family environment and you look in their dugouts and they're having a good time and they love being around each other. So um, that's number one to create a family environment, recruiting a bunch of guys that understand that, hey, this is a team. And you know what? You maybe not get to play as much as you want. And sometimes some guys are going to play more than others, but the team is most important. So by having this family atmosphere is important and we'll have that um, ultimately and then winning. It's like guys have it's a lot of fun when you're winning. We're so excited to see what's going to happen. And you and your family, your family will be here soon with That's you, right? right? Yeah, That's so right. You, you've got a little one. Tell us about your little guy. Sure. Um, oh, I want to talk about my wife first. Uh, please she do. Is, please uh, do. Yeah, I've learned, like, you know, i got to have my priorities <laughs> yes, right, right? That's right. Well, my wife, Kristen, is just an amazing woman. Yeah. And I, I say this for all coaches' wives it's not an easy job. It's not easy. And uh, as much time as we spend, maybe away from the house or mm -hmm. on the field trying to invest in others, um, she's just an amazing woman. And uh, we do. We have a 21 month old. His name's Reeves, and um, he loved the press conference. He finished the he press conference doll, with Go yes. Cats, yeah. right? Yeah, so we practiced in the airport. We tried uh, Go Big Blue, but it came out Go Boo Boo, right? So, <laughs> so, cats is better. I like we it. We stay with yeah. Go Cats, there you but go. yeah, that's our family. That's awesome. Well, and yeah. I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty of him running around on the diamond. And uh, what, what a great opportunity for your family, too, to be able to come here and, and interact mm. with this team and, and this university. Well, we're definitely looking forward to it. Many young athletes dream of competing on the collegiate level with their families cheering in the stands. But for one incoming UK swimmer and her family, that dream seemed nearly impossible. We go now to Kaylee Hartung for the full story. A sunset for me is not really just about the end of the day. It's almost like a promise. You don't see the sun anymore, but you know it's gonna come back up the next day. It's just part of that blessing that we have that there's another day, there's another sunrise that's gonna come along. It's been said that sunsets are viewed with wonder, not just because they are beautiful, but because they are fleeting. When you think about possibly not being here as your kids get older, you think of important moments like when they get married and when they have children and being a grandmother. I try not to really focus on those moments that much and really focus on the things I am able to be a part of. Thinking about Madison's swimming career is, you know, one thing that I hope to be able to take as much advantage of as I can. Everything we do, I think, seems to revolve around swimming. It's just become a part of what the Winsteads are. We've become a swim family. Whatever they say, the 100th breaststroke is coming up. Uh, just hearing that word makes me nervous. <laughs> She's a wreck most of the time. She cries just about every time I do anything exciting. But also when I don't do as well as I wanted, she's always there with open arms to say, oh, it's you got the next one. That positivity has really helped drive me. That drive pushed Madison Winstead to become one of the top prep swimmers in Kentucky. She placed second in the state in the 100 meter breaststroke in each of her first three years of high school. But in January of 2015, midway through her junior year, her mother began experiencing pain under her rib cage and made a trip to the emergency room that resulted in devastating news. Shane Winstead had stage four colon cancer. When I was first diagnosed, there was a lot of optimism around the treatment plan that it would eventually allow me to be cancer free at some point. About six months later, after I'd had surgery and had been off chemo for a while, we learned of more metastases, which changed a lot. The realization was that my life was limited by this diagnosis. It's hard. 
it's it's yeah it's just it's devastating news so um and you deal with it the, the best you can i was in denial for a long time that it was even happening never did it ever hit me in my lifetime that i would get a limited amount of time with my mom to come to that realization that time is limited and it's 40 years shorter than you ever thought it would be hits you like a brick. It built up so much stress and emotion in my body that that's when I realized I had to do something about it. I was gonna have to face this situation because it wasn't working out for me to just be in denial that it was happening. I started spending more time with my mom I wasn't going to take any more meets for granted. Like, if she was up in the stands, I was going to do well just to make her proud. As her mother's condition worsened, Madison swam harder and faster than ever before. Having already committed to the University of Kentucky, Madison continued to outperform her own expectations. She surprised herself this past winter by taking third place at Junior Nationals in the 100-meter breaststroke. And then, after three years of finishing second, she won the state championship. Shane was with her every step of the way. But as she treasured every opportunity to watch Madison race against the clock, she had another outlet that helped slow the time. A very close friend of mine was in Florida watching the sunset and texted me and they said, Shane's sun shall shine. And it just stuck with me because I love watching sunsets. Keith and I were in Florida and we were watching that same sunset and thinking how gorgeous it was. And I thought, I'm gonna ask my friends to share their experiences with me on Facebook and Instagram. Shane's support grew as friends, family, and strangers shared photos from all over the world using the sun shall shine hashtag. Not only does she love sunsets, she loves the fact that people are finally taking the time to just realize the beauty of the world around us. To me, it's more than them just sharing it with me. A lot of it is the influence it's had on their life to be able to take a moment and appreciate what we have each day. With each sunset, Shane found temporary escape, but her disease was unrelenting. College swimming turned into the biggest goal I had and something I've been looking forward to more than anything, and I just, I couldn't put it together that I might start my college career and she might not be there. Her mom had a bad uh, uh, scan, and at that point, it, it felt like our window of opportunity might be shrinking some. So in March, still two and a half months shy of her high school graduation, Madison called Derek Perkins, the assistant swim coach who recruited her to Kentucky. She said, you know, I have, this, I have this crazy idea. You know, I, I don't know if my mom is, is, is going to be around, you know, by the time I'm, I'm a freshman in UK. I want to see if I can swim in the spring dual meet with, with you guys. You know, would that be possible? I said, it doesn't have to be big. I just want to wear a UK cap, and I want my mom to be in the stands and watch it. Perkins and Kentucky petitioned the NCAA for a special exemption to allow Madison to swim in the school's spring blue and white meet. We're really unsure of the process would be accepted, so they weren't necessarily wanting us to get our hopes up that it would happen. The NC2A rarely does things like this. Since I've been doing this, I, I haven't seen a case of you know a, a high school athlete being able to participate in, in a college event. Three weeks later, the NCAA notified Kentucky that Madison's petition to swim had been approved. I just walked in the door and said, NCAA cleared me to swim. Well, my mom cried. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there's ever any good news that she doesn't cry for. It's a big moment for any high school kid is the moment they take their first step on the block as a college athlete. And so for Madison to do that for her mom is a really big deal to her. She hasn't told us that she's nervous. I think it's more potentially the, the emotion that might arise as part of it. Of course, she has her competitive spirit, so you never know what she might have in mind. Well, if she can win, she will. <laughs> <laughs> don't cry, don't cry. Don't cry. Oh my God, don't cry. Don't cry.
Oh, baby, she's gonna be so happy. She knows. You're the only one that doesn't know. One that doesn't know. <laughs> I'm ready for her big day. I don't think it's even gonna come over her, the sadness of it. Um, she's just gonna be so happy to have our friends and family around, and she's just gonna be so happy seeing my dreams and goals coming together into my first college meet. Hi, my, my name, name is Madison Winston, and I'd like to dedicate this race to my mom. First day as a collegiate athlete, Madison broke the meet record in the 200 meter breaststroke. For the Winstead family, the dawn of a career intersecting with the sunset of a life. She has every right to be bitter and angry and mad, but, uh, but that's not what she lets in her. Um, she just enjoys the, days that, the day that she has. She's kept us together when we started to fall apart, and uh, she's the one that was, she's the one that's hurt and injured and sick, and um, it's gonna be hard without that light in our life. How do you want to spend each day? You know, what do you want to do with your life from this point on? We have some time, right? And what, how do we use that, and what do we do on a daily basis to really embrace the moments that we have together? I hope the sun shall shine thing won't end. I hope even after she passes, my friends and family continue to put things up in honor of her. But I know when I see those beautiful sunsets, that's gonna be the strongest connection between me and her. What an incredible story, truly an inspiration, and our thoughts and prayers continue to be with Madison Winstead and her entire family. I'm Christy Thomas. Thanks for watching the Big Blue Review on the SEC Network. We leave you tonight with a look back at the 2015-16 senior class, and up next, Kentucky's big win over top-ranked LSU back in 2007. From Commonwealth Stadium, good night. And the dust. Just gets in your eyes And you know You can't run that far Can't jump that high And you fall Fall down on the floor I watch you lift yourself You push yeah. yourself The defense floats it up and Poitras slams it home. Are you kidding? Right wing, Thompson, a three. Good at the horn. To the far post and through. He's tied.